What's up, everybody? How you doing out there? Coming back to you today from Arizona again. Uh, I'm up in northern Arizona right now. And, uh, we just had a little bit of a cold front come through up here with a little bit of rain, so it might be a little bit windy. Hopefully it's not too bad picking up on the video. I just wanted to do this review on my 12-volt compressor fridge that I've had for the last year and give you a couple of the uh, things that I do with mine, what I like about the fridge, and the, the one issue, there's only been one issue that I've had with the fridge since I've had it, and it's, it's been a really great fridge. Hopefully you'll get something good out of this video and it'll help you with making a decision on a good economical fridge for your build out if you're getting ready to hit the road or if you are currently out on the road and need a good uh, you know, substitution if your fridge went out or if you're adding a fridge into your build. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so this fridge is a 12 volt compressor fridge and it is the Joy Tutus 26 quart model. Um, if some of you guys, like myself, maybe when you're starting out, you can't afford one of the bigger winter or Dometic fridges or an Ingle. Those are a lot of, a lot of money and you're looking for something economical and like a lot of people, you'll probably be shopping on Amazon, which is where I got this one. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a gamble. I, I read the reviews and some were okay most of them were pretty good some of them weren't, weren't good so I took a chance and when I bought it I got the extended warranty on Amazon for three years after the factory warranty and I, as you can see on the ground down here too I, uh, I have the insulated bag that it goes in and I'll, I'll film that in the part of the video also I'll put it back in the bag so this is the Joy Tutus 26 quart 12 volt compressor fridge and that's the inside of it these are the specs with the model number it's real easy to control on and off button you go through the menu and you can you know change the temperature and that sort of thing when I got it it comes in it was in Celsius and not Fahrenheit so there's a little manual that comes with it that tells you how to change it over for that there's your DC 12 volt and 24 volt plug for it you can kind of see this little table is probably is about three feet so you know the, the dimensions I'll, I'll put the dimensions down in the description whenever I post the video uh, so I've had it for a year and it's been a really good fridge I've only had one issue with it and that was when I was running it off of my scion when I had the scion before I got the element um, and I think it was more of something just running it off of the car but it threw a e1 low voltage error code um, it's never thrown that code again since i had it hooked up strictly to solar most of the time and i do a little trick inside of this so as you can see it's just one compartment so it's either it's going to be your freezer or your fridge because it will freeze you can get it i've consistently ran it down to negative two three four degrees and it will freeze uh, but what I do is I put a piece of reflectix down in the middle of it and I separate it by the reflectix and it keeps the I usually put my frozen foods on the bottom and the refrigerated foods up on the top so like when you separate it with the reflectix I'll crank it down and it doesn't let the inside get as cold up on the food on the top and it keeps the the food down below pretty frozen uh, that little trick has kind of worked pretty good with for me anyway all right so here you can see I put it back in its bag and it's really good I I did a reflectix cover to insulate it a little bit before when I first got it before the, the cover was sold out whenever I bought the fridge so but I did a, a little reflectix like homemade cover around it and that worked pretty good but once this came 
back available, I ordered the actual factory cover for it. And it has a Velcro here to keep it closed. A couple little accessory pockets on the side. And this is really important when you have it, is to keep these vents open and not put anything around the vents. That's how the heat gets out from the compressor that's in there. A couple more pockets on the back. It had a strap to it, like where you could carry it like a cooler, but I got rid of the strap. I didn't use it. And then on the top, it has this little clear plastic piece so you can change your settings through there. Um, so the fridge itself, when I got it, I think was around $260. And then the cover was another, I believe, $45, something like that. So, you know, for 300 and some change, I was willing to gamble with it with the extended warranty that I got, which pushed it out uh, to the three year mark as far as the warranty goes. And like I said, the only problem I've ever had with it was the E1 code. And that was when I had it plugged into the 12 volt on the Scion. Um, not, I've never seen the, the E1 code in the element, so I'm not really sure exactly why the two cars were different. Um, and once I had it hooked completely to the solar and running off the solar, it was uh, perfectly fine. Never saw the E1 code again. So there, maybe there was some kind of fluctuation in the in the voltage in the plug of the Scion that the element didn't ha doesn't have. I'm not really sure. So just as a warning that you may see that E1 code if you're running it in certain cars and maybe not the other ones. I can't it, tell you the reasoning behind it. Maybe you can do some more research on it. That's just my experience with it. But overall, the build quality is really good. Uh, it stays consistent with the temperature that you set it at. Uses very, very little energy. Uh, if, you'll, if you saw the video of me on the build out video of my element, you'll see that I run it with just a 75 amp hour battery and a 100 watt Renogy compact solar panel. And it's always kept up pretty good on that. You know, running such a small solar system with only one, one battery, you always have the issue of when it's, when it is uh, a little cloudy. You know, you don't have a huge storage bank, but it does pretty good for, you know, a day or two of some cloudy weather, especially with the MPPT controller if you're going to run it off of something small. Um, I had a foldable solar panel at the very beginning that I used for the battery and other than like the, the bad cables that were on it, I mentioned it in my other video also, the Echo Worthy 120 watt foldable panel. Even that panel kept the battery good to keep it charged up to run the fridge. So I've had it for a year. And like I said, the, the build quality is good. I haven't had any issues with it. It's nice and consistent. And I think that it is a very affordable and reliable fridge based on my experience with it. And I would recommend getting the factory bag. It's just a little easier than trying to make your own and it's got the cutouts and everything in it. Um, and it, I don't think it's a very high expense item at like, you know, under 50 bucks to do it. Okay, so right now I have it plugged into the car because that cable is longer than my battery cable to be able to show you guys the controls on it. So when you want to change your temperature, you press and hold this down. That gets you in the mode to be able to edit the menu. You can see I'm taking it down. So the setting goes to negative eight. And like I said, I have had it to keep uh, meat frozen and stuff. I put it on like negative two in there. It's kind of hard with the glare to see it exactly. But right now you can see the car is running at 13 point six volts and I always keep it in that economy mode and on the low uh, and I think that's what helps me out a lot with 
using so little energy and that keeps the food perfectly cool. You have your on and off button. This is how you adjust your temperature settings right here as you can see from like the little snowflake. And then there is a, like a USB here. You know, you can use it to like charge your phone up if you want to. And then the, the lid flips up like that as you saw before. But that's basically the, that's basically the interior size of it. So I'm gonna grab this bottle real quick. So you can kind of see that's my Nalgene bottle, uh, how big that is in there. You know, you can keep keep that in, in the fridge. This is a 32 ounce. So you can kind of see and judge that based on the size of that, the interior dimensions. It's the small, it's a small fridge and you know, for one or even two people, for packing your things in there you just have to uh, get a different way of packing than you're used to like say in your refrigerator I take a lot of things out of their original packing packaging and pack them down inside like some Ziploc bags and stuff like that but it's it's running consistently right now obviously it's 40 something degrees because it hasn't been on and I cleaned it out to do this video so it does lock. You can see hitting the button here. Once it's in the lock mode, you have to hold this down again and listen for the beep. Once it beeps, you can adjust your menu again or go up as high as you, you know, whatever temperature you want to have it set on. So hopefully you guys like the video if you do hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button and i think it's a good economical fridge for everybody that's on a tight budget like i was when i was doing the build out and look forward to seeing some of you down the road hopefully and keep an eye out i got the uh, sd card situated so i'll be uh, recording some motorcycle riding footage here coming up pretty soon Thank you for watching.